Good morning and welcome to the Jag Corner. Uh, welcome back to the Jag Corner if you've been here before. If you're new, my name is Will Thorpe. I am a programmer and an artist for BitJag, uh, which is just uh, our programming group's name. Um, and Jag Corner is kind of our social media front, our uh, social media name. Um, today we'll be doing some more programming. Last week we did some live streams for some games from some Pico interactive games, but this week we'll be uh, we'll be programming. So both today, this morning, right now, and tomorrow morning we'll be programming. And if you've been watching previous streams, you're already aware of what I've been working on. Um, in fact, let me get it up here. I was going to uh, um, get it flashed over to my skunk board really quick. Let me do that. Uh, let's do make clean and then a oh, let's do this right clear. Let's because the skunk you have to reset it. Let me turn it on. So make reset and clear and then oh there's one other thing I gotta do here. There we go. Uh clear make clean or no 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 we're gonna tell it to sleep. Just wait for about two point five seconds, because that's how long it takes the skunk to reset. Then make clean and then make skunk. And that should come over here to jag the jag should pop up oh yeah there we go that should flash over yeah so if you're new to to the stream this is what we've been working on it's just a little it's a a few um test images and sounds and uh and the controller test uh for the jag just some really basic things um, somebody was asking for a set of tools similar to the 240p test suite, and we'll, I'll be talking a little bit more about that later, uh, because today we're actually going to get this menu, just the superficial things here, looking a little bit more like that. So we're going to be uh, pulling in a text library, something that can display text. Right now we're just using the built-in console uh, in the removers library for doing our text, which works just fine, but can't customize it too much at least not easily and so uh, I have a library that I built for the games that uh, BitJag works on um, that uh, actually my brother he 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 did the initial version I've done some updates on it we'll probably do some more updates on it for our specific use case today um, we may even build a font today uh, I didn't even think about that we'll probably need to do that unless there's one available for the 240p test suite that's under an open license. Uh, I think there is. I was I was reading the wiki the other day and they said everything is open license except for, uh, seems like there were two, maybe three things that they specifically mentioned that weren't under an open license. And so, uh, so we should be able to just grab that and, and drop that in. And, uh, but anyways, yeah, it's just uh, some basic tools here that allow us to, uh, you know, do color calibration. Uh, there's this white screen, which is uh, apparently good for power, testing power on the Jag. I don't completely understand that. There is a, uh, in fact, we're doing a test here so I can see if the audio is working. Oh yeah, it looks like the audio is working on the Jag. Of course, we won't be pushing too much stuff out to the Jag today, but um, uh, but yeah, so there's a uh, something that allows you to change the balance on the audio, and then there's a controller test. And you can do update con eight controllers here on the Jag, um, which is nice. And that should be working 100%. Like, I think I got it figured out. I figured out how to detect when a team tap's plugged in um, to either controller port. And so it adjusts uh, the detection when that happens. And anyways, so there's that. Let me uh, get out of this. And then what I've been doing over the last few weeks is uh, a few screensavers. And so there's a cool matrix screensaver. Oh, yeah, isn't that awesome? Look at that. I can see the lady in the red dress right there, right? Um, and there's some options for that, too. 
Uh, you can change the drop color, you can tell it to be random. Uh, random is kind of my thing, I, I like to do that. And then trail burn in, there's a bunch of options for that. So let's watch it change colors here once. It's kind of fun to watch. It picks random colors, and so sometimes the, the color pairing looks good, sometimes it doesn't. Hey, that's not too bad. Kind of a salmon with yellow. <laughs> but uh, anyways, yeah, and it'll change colors every once in a while. But um, And then what I worked on, what I've been working on, is this Mystic uh, screensaver, which is a, uh, a version of the Mystify screensaver in Windows. It's a classic Windows screensaver. I think they had it in Windows 3.1, maybe even earlier. So got that working pretty good. Uh, right now the colors are set to randomly change and this one has some options too so random line color random background color and then you can tell it how many shapes to do how many vertex uh, vertices per shape so we can knock this this is kind of cool because you can literally make it dots uh, which is cool to cool to see i don't know if you can see that on stream if it's over compressed or not yeah it looks like it might be showing up um, but it's kind of cool to bump that up to you know a ton here like 20 and see those bounce around <laughs> and then oh I was gonna show you yeah there's this is this is really cool um, you know I wasn't I to, to be honest I wasn't expecting my code to be this uh, flexible uh, without crashes anyways <laughs> and so it, it worked out pretty good um, yeah this is this is kind of fun I like this so, oh, and I figured out the flickering issue, um, which I did this all off stream. And so I, what I implemented was a double buffering uh, setup right now. Uh, before I wasn't double buffering anything. And so now it, it'll double buffer, um, but it will be, uh, it'll slow down, of course, uh, if there's too much to draw. But that keeps it from screen tearing, which is nice. So it's, it's effectively only running at 30 frames a second now because it has two, two buffers. And for one frame, it does that, and while it shows that frame, and while it shows that frame, it's drawing the other one, and then it swaps them. And then it, it's showing that one it, one frame, it resets this one, redraws it, and then swaps them again, and it does that over and over again. And so you're cutting your frame rate from 60 to 30 frames a second, but um, it's worth it to get rid of the screen te tearing. And for something as simple as this, you don't really need 60 frames a second. Um, anyways, so yeah, I was just going to keep that going. Maybe I'll... Uh, Bring this up, and then we'll turn on random background color. So both the uh oh, it crashed. Oh no! <laughs> there is something. There are some bugs with that screensaver still, and I'm not sure what it is. But we're we're gonna work that out some other day. I'm not too worried about it right now. I'll reflash it here. Uh, looks like we're at 1.3 megabytes. Um, oh, I added, I was getting, I was prepping for another screensaver, but uh, we'll do that another day. I, I, what I would like to do is I, I did this book back in 2016 for something called Inktober, where I did uh, 31 different inked drawings based around Atari. And so what I did is I converted those all down to a size, um, a relative to, to the Jaguar, a high resolution size. Um, that way you can you can do a two times zoom on it. Anyways, I was just gonna do a slideshow screensaver, uh, but uh, we'll do that another day. I'm not too too set on that uh, today. Um, yeah, let's turn that on. There we go. So now that should switch. Yeah, random background colors. Yeah, it's kind of fun to watch. Um, but. We're going to be sitting in code and working with Virtual Jaguar mostly today. But um, uh, before we do that, though, uh, let's go over some news items. Uh, let me bring that up on my end. So uh, if you are new here, uh, this is Jag Corner's official website. If you want to learn a bit about the game I'm currently working on, it's called Crescent Memories, which is actually a compilation cartridge of three games. It's a re-release of Flappy McFur. Uh, which was released back in 2016 originally, uh, limited run, uh, a limited release 
on that oddball which is kind of a it's a pong clone but a little more involved uh, there's different collisions and some things that pop up in the middle i was actually i was uh trying out um a version of pong for the game boy color uh not too long ago and and there are a lot of similarities there i'd never played it before but uh, they have stuff popping up in the middle and stuff like that that's kind of what oddball is um and then audit will be watching is a uh, it's a menu driven survival game which may be changing a little bit it'll still be primarily menu driven but i think i'm adding some more uh, uh interactable moments uh some more action oriented moments to the game i'm still working that out um uh on paper and in my head but i also do some blog posts on some of the artwork i do some for other people's jag releases some programming stuff so there's a lot of stuff on that website to uh to enjoy if you want um and i also do some exclusive content through a newsletter uh which uh uh it's just a, it's a sign up list for your email. Um, I don't do it very often. Uh, I <laughs> maybe every couple of months I'll do a short, and it's usually a really short newsletter. But I'm, I'm using that as a way to uh, uh, just have a list of people that I can that I can uh, contact directly about the game and special offers and things like that. And so if you if you're interested in that, uh, please sign up for that. So. Um, now, in regards to news, um, just checking out Twitter here, and there were a few things that I've retweeted over the last week or so. Uh, some of the physical items for Gravitic Mines have come in. So, with the deluxe edition of Gr Gravitic Mines, which is an upcoming release for the JAG by Reboot, um, you can get a patch uh, here. And and disclaimer. I, I, I'm the artist behind a lot of this content, <laughs> the physical stuff you can get. I did the artwork for that game too, um, and the label and the box art and all that stuff. There's the poster, which I believe it's a little bit larger. It's 48 inches? Is that right? No. I, I can't remember the size of it. It's on the website. Um, gosh, why can't I remember? I can't remember the size we did for that, but also a keychain... And uh, this is, uh, so uh, the deluxe version of the game comes with a card, which, uh, w with a handful of cards actually, because you can have multiple pilots uh, in in the game. And, and this is used for the high score system, on, online, the online high score system, which you have to input manually. But they use, a, they use a pin code in order to track that. And so that's what the card's for. So there's a picture of the card. Um, he isn't showing anything else. I can't remember if we have pictures for the other things yet, like the hat. Um, I, I know Albert has everything he needs now, and so, um, but I don't know if he's gotten proofs for all that yet. Uh, also, there was a really cool review for the upcoming Astrite by Phobos, um, which I believe is being sold through Songbird Productions. Uh, it's a Metroidvania-style game. Uh, be sure to check that out. Be sure to pre-order that. That's coming soon. It looks really good. Um, and then we have some pictures. I believe these are the first pictures of the physical uh, product for 8-Bit Slicks. And I did the artwork for this one as well. Um, just the illustration. So like the uh, the logo here with the little cars on it and then the uh, box art as well. So um, I wasn't involved with the layout for the manual or anything on this project. But just, just the artwork. Um, yeah. Oh, and... Here's uh, physical copies of Astrite. Looks like they're getting ready to... I think they are getting ready to ship uh, March 22nd. Yeah, so this month they'll start uh, shipping those out, which is cool. Um, and I think that's it. Um, Reboot does have another game uh, coming down called currently called Jumping at Shadows. Uh, you can follow that at atariage.com. Uh, he's been posting updates there. And I think that's about it. Um, uh yep most of this i've talked about already and so you can watch previous streams if you're interested in it but yeah so there's that um there's also a few things that haven't been tweeted yet uh there is uh pre-orders for the viking saga for the atari Lynx for coming up and i believe this is two games i don't know oh yeah it looks like he's uh i can see here on the top of the box is the title for the two games, which is Protect the Love and Save the Love. 
Um, and these are two games out of the three. He only did a limited re uh, release of the first game. <laughs> it seems like there's a lot of people frustrated about that, or, or at least a little unhappy that they missed out. So hopefully there will be a release of the first volume. I think that's what he's calling it. But this contains the second and third volumes for that game. Um, anyways, uh, so draft product page is open. I wonder if he has pre-orders open on 3.11. So in, in three days, what is that? The Thursday or Friday? Um, those should be open. So uh, two games plus packaging. Oh, so uh, <clears throat> you can get each game separate if you're interested in that without a box. Just comes with the manual, it looks like. Or you can get both games with uh, packaging. And it doesn't look, oh, 45 pounds, or 45 euros, sorry. Um, anyways, so yeah, it's coming down the line. Um, something to look forward to. I Over this last week, Arcade Attack has posted three different interviews with people who were directly involved with the Jaguar. Um, Bill Rabak, Raybach? I think that's how you say his name. <laughs> Sorry if I'm messing that up. That was a really cool interview because he talks about he was involved with lining people up to make games uh, for the Jag, and so he has a lot of details about the the direct interactions between Atari and third-party developers. Really, very good interview. Very much worth watching. There's some cool stuff about Doom in there. Um, AVP, like he's responsible for AVP on the Jag even being a thing. Um, they were like falling behind on production and so he suggested that they actually move the team from the UK to California to finish it off and so it could actually happen. Um, anyways, I think that's how it went. Listen to the interview <laughs> for sure to get uh, factual details on that. But anyways, really cool interview. Um, and then he did one with James Purple Hampton. Um, which is, I believe, somebody, and I may be making this, mixing him up with Bill, but I believed he worked with, uh, oh, maybe I am mixing this up with Bill. I think Bill worked with uh, LucasArts up until Secret of Mon Monkey Island 2, Chuck's Revenge. Um, so he worked with LucasArts and then shifted over to Atari, I believe. Uh, but James Purple Hanton, he's, he was also uh, involved pretty high up with uh, with the Tremels and all those people and working with teams and stuff. And so there's a lot of really cool details there. Oh, no, 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 it says right here. He's the one that worked at LucasArts. Never mind, it wasn't Bill. It was James uh, that worked with with uh, LucasArts. But anyway, some really good stories there. That one's worth listening to. And I haven't listened to this one yet, uh, but how Highlander on the Atari Jag CD was made by Steve, uh, Stephen Mitchell interview. I haven't read this one yet. Um, I'm actually more interested in this one than the other ones, to tell you the truth, uh, because we hear so much about Doom and AVP, but we don't get to hear so much about these off-the-beaten-path games like Highlander. And so I actually enjoy Highlander. I'm not going to say it's a great game at all, but I, um, and there's nostalgia at play here, but um, I, I played through it not too long ago, like a year or two ago. And really enjoyed it, um, especially if you have a walkthrough. It's <laughs> it's really enjoyable. Um, and then there's there's some ways to uh, kind of cheat the game a bit. Um, and once you understand those or or know about those things, you can get through it fairly easily. And 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 it's set up pretty good. But um, anyways, uh, yeah. So I'm actually probably gonna listen to to this sometime uh, today during work. But um, anyways, uh, yeah. Look into those. Uh, but today, programming, one second, we are uh, going to make our little test suite application look a little more uh, closer to this, if I can get it to load here. Don't know why my internet's running so slow, I'm a little, as a kid I had a really difficult time even starting Highlander. Yeah, me too, uh, it's hilarious. Welcome to the stream, by the way. Um, I really struggled with it. It's not easy to control. It has those uh, uh, Resident Evil, uh, original Resident Evil tank control thing going on, or like Alone in the Dark, and um, which I think it came out about a year after Alone in the Dark. You think they would have worked some of those things out, <laughs> and, but they didn't do that for whatever reason. Um, anyways, uh, but yeah, we're going to get it to look a little bit more like this. Um, uh, 
the the menu and everything. I'm going to see if there is uh, some graphics we can rip from the source code um, to start doing this. We're going to start kind of building things from scratch visually with our program, um, which we should be able to do because everything, uh, the, uh, the, the code is, why isn't that resetting? It's weird. Reset. Here, let's just go back. There we go. Um, the code is open for use as long as you uh, release whatever code you derive from their code. Let's hear GitHub. Here's the release page. NES, Game Boy, and Game Boy Advance. Um, we don't want that. Well, I'm thinking I'm going to derive everything from the Mega Drive version. Oh, here we go. Most platforms right there. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, this includes the Mega Drive, the Mega CD, TurboGrafx-16, the PCE Duo. Like, I'm not even familiar with this console. Oh, it's the PC Engine. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've never played one, but I, I know what it is. Um, Super Nintendo. Maybe we'll pull from the Super Nintendo. Let's see here. The version of the suite runs in full 256 by 244, 224. Um, it has some test patterns for the 256 and 239. Huh. It requires a flash cart such as an EverDrive. Let's see here. It's developed. Maybe we'll, we'll derive from the Sega Genesis because I think that's what the first version was. Um, uh, based off of the first version of this 240p test suite was based off of. Um, let's see what's available here. I actually haven't dug through this, so I have no idea <clears throat> um, what we're going to find here. Utilities, nope, nothing there. Source boot, nope, nothing there. Sega CD files. Project CD, these are all assembler. Used ISO added. Yeah. Res. Passive lag test. Just now up to date with SNES version. Um, and the other reason why I want to kind of conform to this menu system is uh, I think what I want to do is actually start going through and recreating all these tests on the JAG. And it looks like that may be a lot harder than I thought, but not impossible. Uh, there's a lot of assembler going on here. Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience with assembly programming, but this might be an opportunity to really start digging into that. So um, I'm just w wondering if the graphics are all in assembler as well. Definitely have some. Yeah, these are the tiles, so I guess these are all an assembler. It's not too helpful. Let's see here. Yeah, the color bars. So it looks like he's generating all this procedurally. Hmm. Which does make things a little bit more difficult. Yeah. Improved gray ramp and color bar color bars. They all use shadow mode. Yeah, so everything's in assembler rather than uh, in any bitmap formats that are useful for me. I wonder if the other um, no, not that the uh, other ones like the Dreamcast might actually have some bitmap images that I can just pull and do a conversion on those. Not sure. There's a logo. Not licensed or endorsed by Sega. PBR. FFT. 
TFW, how to compile. Not worried about that. PNGs, here we go. Yeah, here we go. This is a little more useful. Uh, the only drawback with going this direction, oh yeah, everything's here. And so what we're going to do is, is um, pull this test suite down. Let's do that. Uh, you guys won't be able to see this, but I'm just going to quickly download everything here. Git clone. Yeah, let's just pull that down. That'll take just a second to do. Uh, maybe I can pull this up for you guys. One second. Let me see what I have going on here. Um, let's go back over to code. Studio mode. I do have this. Dolphin. Where are you? Right there. Oh, that isn't useful. There we go. Yeah, sure. Sure, let's do that. Okay. Okay, so I just downloaded everything. And so Dreamcast, PBR, PNGs. Uh, so yeah, it looks like everything's been co converted over. The issue it will probably be the resolution, yeah. So this is 512 by 256, um, which doesn't help us, I don't think, um, because um, we're running at 320 by 240. Well, that's interesting. Why would they do this? Well, it, let's see here. Um, Dreamcast runs natively at 640. No, it's running a 240p signal, I assume. I don't know. Don't know enough about it. Um, got our stripe test, which is just an 8x8. That's fine. Um, yeah, so it's really just these we would have to figure out. Anyways, I'm not too terribly worried about that except for this background. This is this is the one thing I need to work out. Um, 512 by 256. Here, I'm going to pull this up in an image editor really quick. Um, let me get that set up so you guys can see that because I don't think I have that together yet. A little bit duct tape this morning. Um, let's see here. Gimp, where are you? Huh. There you are. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Let's get that sized up correctly. Yeah, that'll work and transition that over. Okay. Oh, look at that. That's why it's 512. It's just pulled over, so it's actually 320. Should be, or something near that. Um, that's actually a good sign. Let's uh, measure it here. Just the actual pixels, which we're looking at 320 by 240. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. Image, crop image, crop, uh, crop to selection. There we go. Um, yeah, this works out great. Uh, something we do need to uh, figure out. Well, we got to decide. Um, do I want to work with eight, an eight-bit color palette, so 256 colors, or do I want to do everything with the uh, 16-bit um, in 16-bit mode? Uh, it'll obviously save space if I do everything at 8-bit, but I have to think ahead on my palette um, to make sure I'm covering all my bases. And a way we could do that is I pull all the images into, at least here in GIMP, I pull all the images in uh, to a single 
canvas and then we do a conversion to uh, 256 colors and that way we have every color we'll ever need <laughs> basically um, it does limit us a little bit in the future I'm thinking because there are so few graphics that we'll just do um, a 16 bit 16 bit uh, it's uh, it's a what is it per pixel 16 bits per pixel I believe on the Jag um, so we could just do that hmm. <sighs> and we kind of have to decide this early on too because uh, it'd be a lot of work to go back and, and change things um, I'm just wondering we have this little guy here we have this sonic background which would probably end up being 8-bit at the end of the day uh, 480 some 480 and this is specifically for the um, for the Dreamcast I don't have to worry about those and then we have this Donna image um, I don't know why uh, my windows cut off there one sec let me fix that there we go there we go Um, let's do this. Let's start with 16. In the future, we could go to 8-bit if we absolutely needed to. I kind of want to do at least 16-bit color because of uh, these gradients, these color, these color bars. Um, I'm a little worried. No, we should be able to handle those. Just pulling these up really quick. Yeah, we should be fine. So yeah, let's do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull. Should, I should probably just pull everything over here. Um, yeah, because these are just going to be... These I can make one-bit sprites if I wanted to because they're just black and white, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll just do that. So I'm just going to pull this whole folder over to uh, wherever my project was. I'm actually going to drop this now. navigate back and graphics I'm just going to put this here and I'm going to call this um, um, test suite GFX like that okay Um, and we can actually, we can just use these. We can do a straight conversion of everything right now. Um, gosh, I kind of want to divvy these out, though. So, uh, let me bring this back up. kind of want to divvy these out into 16-bit versus 8-bit versus whatever bits uh, we need for each one. Shadow... Let's do this. Um, um, GFX one bit. Yeah, we'll do that. GFX. Uh, I think we'll just need one bit for those black and white ones. Yeah, and then everything else is either uh, eight bit or sixteen. like that. So things like this, 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 this. Oh, we're going to have to clean up some of this, it looks like, because they have different resolutions of this circle. That's fine. We'll clean that up here in a bit. Hey, there's our font map, too. Um, we're going to have to change that, though, for my text engine, um, which, oh, that's that's a good point. Ah. Well, what I can do is for the text engine, I can throw a license on that. So it's uh, 
that one can't be copied. Or I guess we could open source it. Like it's not that big of a deal. It's not that complicated of a text engine. Text engine. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll get these graphics things figured out here first. Uh, this will be 16, 16, 16. 16. Um, yeah, let's do 16 on that as well. And that one, that one. And on Donna and this SD thing. What is this? This has transparency on it. I don't know if I'm concerned with that. I'm not sure. Let's drop it into the 16 just to begin with here. This will be 16, 16 numbers. Let's make these 16 as well. If I remember this test uses colors and so we may need that. Background, float menu, um, the font, the font will actually be 8-bit because we'll be doing some different colored fonts um, for to our uh, highlight, highlight, we'll be highlighting menu selection. So, uh, yeah, this, I think, we will make 1-bit on both of those. Mm, these are all 16, 16, long rectangle, long rectangle, I don't know what those are for, they're black and white, but they have this green background, not sure what that's about, that may be an alpha thing with the Dreamcast, let's uh, drop those into one bit for now, um, probably drop that into the one bit, and these, Sonic back one, two, three, and four. Why are there so many different versions of this? Oh, they're frames. So they're kind of cheating that animation, which we may need to rebuild those at some point. Sprite, zero LED. I don't know what these are, but they look just black and white. Um, the striped is black and white. These are all black and white. And some of these we may be just procedurally generating. In fact, all of these I could procedurally generate. Wouldn't be difficult. Um, anyways, but the thing we want to focus on the most here right now is our background, which is this. So, actually going to discard this. Um... Oh, I don't have it on my switcher. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Okay. Um, go back over here to graphics. We're going to edit. This background image. So it's actually 320 by 240. Um, we don't need all this extra transparency data. I'm not sure. It must be a limitation of the Dreamcast is your textures have to fit like uh, 512, 256, 128 is my guess. That's what they're doing there. Um, but we just need a 320 by 240 image. And then over encoding, get rid of Dolphin. Uh, we can do our conversion here, and so I'm just using the Removers uh, Image Converter, um, which I have renamed here to JAG Image Converter, just so I can remember it a little bit easier when I type it in on the console. Um, oh, let me actually go over here. So, uh, CD, GFX, let me go to Graphics, and then Test Suite Graphics, and then GFX. 16-bit 
it's, there's all those PNG files and we're only going to be converting the uh, uh, the background and we're not using a clut uh, or a color lookup table um, but we need to tell it to do some things we don't want it to dither because I'm pretty sure that's on by default uh, it is an RGB image uh, and it needs to be a binary not assembly um, that may change once we get closer to finishing this up in the future I don't know we'll see um, and I think that's it we don't have to do anything else we just have to put in name back PNG I don't know we messed up something it's probably no RGB is fine RGB tells us to do it as RGB 16 um, what did I mess up no dithering where's no dithering did I get that right oh I spelled uh, I needed to put a second dash next to binary there we go now if we list that you'll see down here we have a back to RGB um, yeah, uh, dash L. I just wanted to check out the size of that. It's probably pretty big. So yeah, it's 153k, which is huge. Um, so and this is what I was concerned about with the 16 um, bit color. Uh, so what we can do. Yeah, this is bytes, so yeah, 153k. Um, uh, what we can do is compress this, and so uh, we use LZ77 compression in the removers library, and so we can just compress that back to RGB uh, to back to L LZ77. And it looks like we got 14% of that size, so if we list that again, up here so this was our original side we went from 153k to 21k which is considerably smaller in terms of cartridge size now when we unpack it it will be this big in memory again but that's fine for what we're doing that's that's fine there isn't a whole lot going on but uh yeah uh so what we can do now that we have that is we can add it to our uh, macro that gathers up all of our graphics when we build the program. Um, I'm going to just create a new section here. This is all assembler syntax here, I believe. Um, and we'll just test suite graphics, GFX, and this is packed. This is data packed. And we're going to call this just back like that. We're just going to match our file names. And it's right. I'm just going to copy and paste this from down here. So from our current position there, and it's back.lz77 like that. So this is the, the reference to this asset once it's packed into the binary we can use this name to actually grab it and I put a period there instead of a comma so I still at work we'll watch a bit later good to see you Matt uh, thanks for dropping in hope works going good for you um, uh, we're doing some not so exciting stuff today <laughs> I'm I'm going through uh, the test suite we've been working on and I'm getting it to match a little bit closer to uh, um, the actual 240p test suite. Let me pull up a picture of that once I get to the right place. Um, which you may be aware of, you may not be aware of. Let me see if I can back up to that. Yeah, so it's the one that looks like this. Um, yeah, we're just conforming to this a little bit, a little bit closer. So, anyways. I do need to work out uh, the text thing. I don't know. I, I was planning on using our internal text uh, engine, um, but we would. I don't think we would have to open source it uh, completely. 
we could uh, say that that's closed source. I don't know. Is it really that big of a deal that we keep that closed source? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I know they talk about somewhere up here about the uh, licensing on some parts of it. Generate and help identify. They talk about it somewhere. I just can't remember where. It might be here somewhere. Versions. Free software. You can redistribute it and or modify it under the terms of the GNU General Public License as published the free center. Either version 2 of the license or at your option any later version. This program is just distributed in the hope that it may be useful but it's without warranty. Without even the implied warranty of merchant milling or the fitness of a particular purpose, see the GNU. Yeah, you should have received a copy. If not, write for the free foundation. Yeah, so I'm not sure um, what I'll have to do there. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I can work that out later. I can I can talk to these guys and figure out what my options are there. Uh, if it comes down to it, I'll just uh, I'll do a really simple version of the text engine or something, and we'll just call it good. Um, anyways, uh, let's go back over to coding. Um, we got that in, and so now we can pull it. So we're actually going to start over on our title screen. Um, what I should do is maybe back over here at the browser, we should take a look at how they have things structured. Um, Looks like they have a main.c, patterns, res, like cd tests, tests. Uh, time code. And see, I might be able to just pull a lot of this code over and create uh, equivalent codes. Um, I don't know. Platform is going to be quite a bit different, so I'm not sure exactly how we'll do it. Draw stripes. See here, it looks like they're not doing different states for any of this. Exit. Alternate. Yeah, it looks like they're just bunching everything up inside of these. Um, C files, so we can we can follow that for these tests if we wanted to. Um, patterns, which I believe is yeah, these are the the screen patterns like the color bars and other other screen tests, and it looks like they're just compiling it all in here. Um, yeah, our 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 code is definitely going to be a lot heavier than this. Um, I may be able to slim it down enough. Uh, user index, v set palette, sets the palette to gray. So yeah, they're using 8-bit colors on all this. Maybe I should do 8-bit color on everything. Hmm. Let's go look at main. Main. Unsigned 16-bit. Reload, buttons, tracking his joystick stuff, uh, set screen height, that's fine, get into our main loop, uh, change the cursor position, and he's just doing a switch case, and yeah, he's just going to different states, okay, so yeah, I can do a very similar thing here test pattern menu. Oh, and it, all his menus are in this main main folder too. Okay, that's fine. That's kind of what we're doing already in our code. Um, I'm going to be rebuilding everything from scratch anyways, uh, just to uh, uh, conform. And I'm debating whether I want to conform to this entirely. I don't know. 
Uh, draw intro. There's some sort of intro thing. Not worried about that. Not worried about test patterns, video tests, audio tests. Not sure what these are. These, oh, these look like they're titles. Changes the position based on um, NTSC or PAL. Oh, that's a whole other thing. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. We're going to do everything NTSC for now. Um, we'll have to figure out the PAL stuff at some other point. And I'm going to need help with that. I'm going to have to contact somebody about that. Um, test pattern menu. Yep, and he's just got his text library here where he's just drawing text. Maybe what we'll do is I will... Uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. That will probably be the simplest way to approach that. I mean, he's just doing a switch case statement for all these, all these functions. So, and all these functions just go out to another source file. And that's fine. We can do that. Audio test menu. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, let's uh, do something a little more interesting <laughs> now. Um, now that I have a basic idea of how they're structuring things, we're going to create a, uh, um, I almost want to reorganize our project here just a little bit, uh, just to make the file, the naming convention the same. Um, so I'm going to go rename some files here. Again, this is going to be just a little bit boring for you guys. Um, cause I'm going to have to reload this at some point. I'm going to do a make clean first. And we're going to rename this to main.c. You know what I'm going to do here before we make these big changes is I'm going to back this up. Uh, compress. Here's I'm just going to compress our project here into, I'm going to archive it so uh, I can jump back to this if I need to. Okay, I'm actually going to do this all in the console, so CD, so you guys can kind of see what's going on. Um, so I'm just going to change some file names. So the remover test suite, I'm going to just make it main.c. Um, and so that's pretty easy. We just do this c to main.c and then move rmv. This is how you rename stuff in Linux, by the way, is you just move the file and we're just moving it to the same place, but we're just changing the name while we do the move. So now um, we have main.c and main.h. Uh, we do need to uh, reload things. And so I'm actually going to close these and I'm going to run our open script again, like that, and I'll just open everything up. Uh, collapse recursive, there we go. And there it is. Gotta go change some things here, main.h, and then this is main, and main. I do wanna keep my I'm going to get rid of the screensavers.h. I'm not going to worry about that right now. And we're actually going to start from scratch on all this. So I'm just going to delete. I am going to keep this um, for the audio assets. Controllers, total. And I'm going to keep the stuff for the controller. D-pad buttons. Yeah, for all the controller stuff, I'm going to keep that. The highlights. Control check. We're going to be keeping that in team tab check. We're going to keep, be keeping all those functions. We may move these to another source file eventually, but I do want to keep those. Screen calibrate, color bars. We're going to get rid of these two, like that. Cool. Um, yeah, we should be fine on all that now. Um, but we do want to bring in um, extern. Uh, this is an unsigned 
8-bit integer that we're bringing in and it's called back. That was just our, um, uh, crap, do I need to make that a pointer? I can't remember. No, I don't. Okay, back, and then we'll need a place to put that data once we unpack it, which we'll call just back data. And then we'll need a sprite uh, structure to, uh, uh, to actually display that back sprite, like that. Okay, that's good. Um, let's go to main.c. We're gonna be keeping, I'm gonna be getting rid of that. Uh, we'll be keeping all of this, that's fine. We're gonna be keeping our debug console. We may be using that in the future. We will need this switch case statement though at some point. Um, how am I doing the controller lookup? Looks like I'm doing that in settings as well. Where am I knitting my settings? Oh, right there, init global settings. So we're gonna keep that too because that's passing around the display and, it, and our controller and all that stuff and our, our controller check probably relies on, on, on all that as well. Um, oh, and maybe we, we will keep, um, yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll wipe out everything else here. We're not gonna be using the console anymore, uh, so that's fine. Um, we will keep our fade functions. I don't know if we're going to use those, but um, we might. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, we won't be doing the rolling fade anymore. Um, uh, we'll be keeping that. Um, all the controller stuff is going to be resetting so we can get rid of all this and all the closed console stuff like that. X old, Y old setting D. Okay, this is for, oh, this is for, um, let's see here. Yeah, the screen calibrator. Okay, um, where is the beginning of our switch case statement? There's case one. I just kind of want to start, oh, uh, this is where we're starting. I just want to get rid of yeah, most of this. Hmm. Um, this is just set random colors in color lookup table. Yeah, we can wipe this out to here, like that. And then all these other cases, I'm just going to wipe out completely because they're all going to be changing. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. We'll keep the cases because we'll be using them, but um, all the code inside of them will be just getting rid of. Uh, oh, I kind of feel bad deleting all this because uh, there's some clever things I figured out that we probably won't be using. So that's fine. That's fine. Oh, this is... we got to be careful here. This is our controller test, which... We want to keep this. I kind of want to move it over to a function at some point. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, we're going to be dropping the screensavers. And then we just have a default control check. D pad button sprite. Okay, yeah, this is, yeah, eventually we'll get this all moved over to um, another function. So I'm not too worried about that right now. Okay, let's bring in our background sprite since we're gonna be using that. Let's use it. 
Okay, we gotta decide because we have our main menu and then we have sub menus. And then when we select something in a in the main menu or sub menu, it may be going to another function that doesn't include the background. Um, hmm. So I gotta decide where uh, the scope of that's going to be. I could just make it global, that way I can control it globally so I can unload it and load it. Um, maybe that's what we'll do. I, I do have this common assets folder or a header file here, which is, I think I was basically making everything that needed to be global, global. Uh, so yeah, rolling fade. So maybe we'll do that. Nah, we can leave it at main.c. It's global to main.c, which is where we're gonna be using it most of the time. And what I can do is, because we're gonna be doing our main menu and our sub menus here. Um, Pretty sure that's how how they're doing it over here. May not see. Knit may not see. Um, so cursor select. Fade. Turn zero. Let's see your test pattern menu. And yeah, he's just jumping into another switch case statement. Oh, he is doing some sort of fade. See, I need to actually load this test suite and see what it looks like or find a YouTube video. Maybe we'll just go find a YouTube video and see how things work. Um, draws the text, has this cursor movement. Uh, that's fine. And then he has a switch case, draw. And it looks like he's just drawing over. Let's go into one of those. Uh, so the test patterns. Draw plunge, P-L-U-G-E. There's a set highlight shadow. Yeah, he's not even unloading the background. They're just keeping it up. That's what it looks like. And we can do that on the Jag here as well. We have enough memory to do that. So. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll just load it once and just keep it loaded. I mean, it will be global, so if we do need to actually get rid of it at some point, we can do that. Um, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. So go back over to here. We'll load it globally. Or we can do a check. So when we go into uh, our main menu here, which is not a switch case statement. Um, let's see here, how are they doing that? Just trying to remember how they're jumping out of that first loop, if they are, in fact, jumping out of it. No, they're just, okay, so th this is the main loop uh, that everything is, is working with. Okay, that's fine. We can, we can use that. Um, and the main loop, yeah. So this is this is what's going on. Is we generate? Yeah, everything is through this state machine here. Everything is a child to this state machine. That's fine. So case one. Um, in fact, let's just look at his code here. First case will be, case one will be test pattern menu, which is good, that's what we want to do. This will be test pattern, uh, why am I putting underscores? Pattern menu, like that. And this will, all this here will be, most of it anyways, up here except for no, this is actually, this is fine, because this is where we're setting up. Uh, set up background image. We'll be setting up our background image there. Uh, this is the test pattern menu, and I'm just going to do test. Mm, test pattern menu, like 
that. That's fine. And we're going to uncomment that because, it, or we're going to comment that out because we actually don't have that yet. Yeah, and then we'll, everything is subservient to this state machine. That's fine. That works great. Um, what we do need, and I may have just deleted all of it. Let's see here. We can go to screensavers and copy some of it. Yeah, just uh, copy some of this because this, we need this for every loop that we find ourselves in. Should probably put that all in a function or something. Um, yeah, we have our background color, it just fades to that. Yeah, now we just need to set up our, uh, we need to set up our background image, let's do that. So, we have LZ77 unpack and we're pulling from, uh, I believe it's source, well, actually I don't remember. Let's open up the removers source code for the LZ77 unpacker, uh, the header file for it anyways, so we can see how we use it. Include um, header file, so it's what we're putting into the function and what's coming out uh, in a, and what we're shooting the data out to. Um, so yeah, I, it's source and then destination. So uh, we do at, um, oh no, I think we just do do back. Uh, we, we don't need the, yes, we do need the address. The address at back. So that's just uh, this right here. Um, because that's where, that's the name for that data, that pack data. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up. Uh, that's the name here that points to the data that we're packing into the binary. Um, so that's our source. And then we need a destination, which we also did, but we need to make sure that it's casted as, as what for what the function is looking for. So it's looking for a unsigned 8-bit integer pointer, um, which if we look at our header file, when we created that, it's supposed to be phrase aligned. And, and so we need to cast this just for this function to be an 8-bit, an, an unsigned 8-bit integer pointer just for this function. And that's fine. Um, and we know it's phrase aligned because the width of our image is divisible, in this case, by 8. Yes, d divisible by 8. I'm pretty sure that's what it is anyways. Um, and so we'll cast it as uint 8 pointer. Um, and it was called back data, like that. Now I'll unpack our data, and then it'll unpack it. Oh, we missed something. We have to allocate um, the right amount of space for uh, that image in memory because we, so it's it's in our cartridge space right now and it's packed and we're unpacking it to memory on the jag and so we got to allocate that memory really quick and that's pretty easy just go back data so that that pointer equals malloc memory allocation size of um, uh, and it's the width, which is 320 uh, times 240, and because it's 16 bits, uh, so it's it's two bytes per pixel rather than one byte per pixel, pretty sure, we have to times that by two. Um, and that should give us enough space to unpack that data into. Okay, once it's unpacked, we can um, create our sprite, so back sprite. That was the name of the sprite structure, which I don't, I think I may not, no, no. Yeah, so it's it's of the type sprite, which is just a structure type that is, has been defined in the removers library, is a new sprite. And we give it the width, 320 by 240, the position on screen. In this case, it'll just be 0, 0. And then the depth, which is 16, and then the data it should be using, which is this back 
data. Um, and because it's a pointer, we don't need to use an ampersand for the address. So we should be fine with that. And then we need to attach the sprite to the display at a given layer. Um, and so we just use the name of the sprite, which is called back sprite. And the name of this function is helpful because it's the order of the, the parameters that you put in. So the sprite, then the display, and then the layer on that display. And so our display is in, uh, we have it put in, you can actually see here, settings, our custom uh, type um, uh, for our settings, our global settings. A member of that is the display, and so we can just pass that. Uh, so settings, display, and then our layer, we're just going to put it at the very back for now. That may change. Um, let's see if that worked. Um, Uh, one second. I want to see oh, if buttons press. So he's he's wrapped this into. Okay, so we just need to wrap our uh, this into an if statement. That's how he's doing it. Our switch case. Oops. Um, this actually needs to be pulled up here into our main while loop like that and then this is uh, if um, s our joystick is pressed and it's uh, joypad a um, and our oh did I get rid of it I think I did I may need to rewrite this let's go to common assets I think we have a counter, yeah, controller delay counter. And uh, s dot controller delay counter is equal to zero. We then we can go and check this uh, switch case statement, which I need to tab. <laughs> I need to move this into a function because uh, this is going to be a bit of a pain. Anyways, we wrap this there. Um, oh, wait, no, 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 wrap it. Here, that's correct. Uh, page, ah, uh, it's not going to let me do that. Let's see if I can do this here without screwing it up. Select all this. I do need to move this. Ah, screwed it up again. <laughs> okay, let's do it this way. Um, there we go. It's a bit faster. And then I can just tab that over. Okay. And that should be correct. And then we need to add if s.controller delay counter is greater than zero. Um, S controller delay counter. This just keeps, this locks the controller just for a few frames so it doesn't move too quickly. There's a better way of doing this, but for this, I'm, this is all we're going to do that, do for now. Um, yeah, greater than zero. Yeah, that's fine. And then we'll get menu movement in there later. Uh, let's run a make command on this. Uh, make. Oh, there's one more thing I got to change. Um, our config file I need to change because we changed the names for all this. So this is now main.c, and I'm actually going to just drop these. We don't need them anymore, um, just like that. Uh, we don't need screensavers either. It's just these. OK, make s undeclared. Oh, did I accidentally delete? Um, I may have accidentally deleted. Uh, it doesn't look like I deleted it. Hmm. Strange. Cool. 
common assets, which is right there, and then that should just be right here. Uh, global settings, settings, that's fine. Oh, uh, that's why. Um, it's actually settings, not S. Here, let's just switch it to S. Call it good. S, S, S. Let's go through all this. This will just make the code a little bit shorter uh, to read. Maybe I should have just kept it settings. Eh, we'll just keep it settings. <laughs> I'm backtracking. I thought there were fewer instances of that. We just need to make this settings like that. Um, there, 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 and I got it there. So we should be good, at least mostly on this. Unacquired 52, go 52. Really? Thank you. <laughs> All right. 55. There's that. There we go. Okay. Uh, clear, make, clean, make, uh, virtual Jaguar. And it crashed. Didn't like something. Okay. Let's start from the top. This is the problem of like building off of older code is uh, sometimes you'll leave something in and it doesn't want to work. Let's just comment this out and see if it crashes. It's probably just how I'm pulling this in. Yeah. Okay, so we're fine there. So I'm just doing something wrong here. Size of... Let me check something here really quick. Uh, screen savers. I don't know if we need that ampersand to tell you the truth. Um, screen savers. Let's just go in here. There you are. No, we do need that. We need the ampersand pointer. Yeah, so we're fine on that. So this should be good. Here, let's see. Let's just comment those out really quick. Uh, yeah, seems fine. Um, make sure I have my pointers set up. Yep, I'm fine there. Malloc, size of 320 by 240 times two, that's fine. Back to back data, that's fine. 320 by 240 back data. Hmm. Oh, um, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure I spelt that all right. Should be good. Yeah, we should be fine. That makes it crash as soon as we try to attach it to the display. Right? Or is it when we make our new sprite? That's interesting. I don't know what's going on there. I've never seen that before. Hmm. Here, let's try something. Let's do this. Let's just make it RGB. And it's just going to be normal. Graphics data, uh, and then this is a this will be our phrase. Comment that out. We're just going to bring it in, unpacked, and see how that works. Um, ampersand. Just make sure phrase extern extern phrase back like that. It should give us what we want. We won't see anything immediately. 
but it shouldn't be crashing. And now when we attach it, yeah, there it is. Okay, so that is fine. Hmm. I'm probably just not mallocking enough data or something. There's something I don't understand about this. Uh, somewhere where we could look um, is the sprite source, how there's source code in the removers library we could look at that will give us a clue to how much memory, memory we need to allocate um, for a 16-bit sprite. Um, so if we go to sprite, you guys can't see this right now, I'm just navigating uh, the source code here really quick. If we bring this up, it could be, yeah, right here. So depth, uh, 16 bits per pixel is two times uh, the width, which is, um, yeah, so it should just be two times. That should be working. Should be working because it's, uh, oh, duh, um, size of un uint8 underscore t, and it's 320 times 240 times 2. There we go. That might help. Oh, we got to go change all this stuff back. We got that. Got that. Uh, where's my data? There it is. Uh, got that. Got LZ77. That's all good. Okay. Uh, 44. That's good. Why is it complaining? Oh, we forgot a times. There we go. Let's do this. Let's just wrap it in one more set of parentheses. So, does that in order. There we go. I think that was the problem. So I just wasn't allocating correctly. There we go. Okay. So, we have our background. Uh, let's make it so it isn't transparent. Uh, so back sprite uh, trans equals uh, zero. I think it's just trans. It could just it could be transparent. No, there we go. And that just uh, makes it so the black black blacks are are solid. Um, cool. Yeah. So we have that. We can actually start building our menu. Let's do this. We gotta edit the sprite sheet first. Um, oh. Uh, Okay, so let's go edit the sprite sheet. I'm gonna pull up our um, graphic stuff again. Uh, and I'm gonna open up our sprite sheet. Uh, open with GIMP, there it is. And what we're gonna do Let's see here, I imagine these are eight, no, they're not quite eight by eight. Configure grid, uh, image, view, uh, view, show grid, right there, image, configure grid. I think, So there looks like they're eight pixels tall. And how wide? That looks right to me. And five pixels wide on everything. And we can probably do this monospaced. Um, that's what it looks like. Uh, 
let's see here. Yeah, that should be fine. Um, wh what I need to do is change this so it's all on one row because that's how our text engine works. Um, so I just need to uh, move some stuff around here really quick. Yeah, our height, yeah, our height's right. It should be good. Okay. Uh, first of all, image, let's see here, uh, one, two, three, four, we need to take our width and times it by four, canvas size, let's do times four, so it's 512 by 64 by, uh, the height is eight. Oh, we don't want to change that yet though, so 512, just 512, let's do that, resize, okay. And now we can move our stuff, move, move it so it's all in one line. This will take just a minute. Uh, what was it? It is against the right side, it looks like. Just want to make sure I'm lining this up just like it is in those little boxes. That. Oh, look at that. That's uh, a bit longer. Oh, that must be a period, I assume. And it looks like this is just using standard ASCII, so so this should be, this should work. I shouldn't have to rearrange anything. Um, in terms of specific characters. The only character that we are using in our engine is this, so this um, so this is going to be a problem. I mean, I'm going to have to recode things a little bit in our text engine to get things to work because we use the vertical caret for a line break, um, so we'll have to get rid of that. Or I guess I could change the character. We could do that too. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. C D E F G. Hope I got this right. I'm pretty sure I do, but um, in terms of the cell size for each letter, pretty sure I have it right. Um, it needs to be up one. There we go. There's that. And then our last one. Reworking our text engine here is going to be a little bit tricky, but not impossible. Not impossible. There we go. Okay. There's that. What I'm going to do, because this is divisible by eight. Well, let's see here. This is gonna be an eight bit image. That's how we're gonna do all of our text. It's eight bits per pixel. Yeah. Image, crop to selection, like that. And we need to drop this on black. that's how we do transparency on the jag like that there we go there's our font sheet um, which is eight by five pixels per character I got to remember that okay let's export this this is we're gonna call this uh, we're just gonna overwrite it that's fine because I'm pretty sure I got it set up correctly Okay, and then back at coding, we are going to convert that. So CD, GFX, test, and then GFX 8-bit. So, and this is a little bit different because it's 8-bit. Oh, there's one more thing we got to do. Um, this will just mode indexed and uh, 
yeah, just convert that. I'm just converting it so it's uh, an index image. Um, save uh, or export, and I'm actually going to export it as a as a GIF image. There we go. Okay. I know you guys couldn't see that. I was just changing it really quick. So we have a we have a GIF there now, and, and then we use our JAG image converter. This is going to have a color lookup table, and we don't want it to do any dithering. And we want it to be a binary file, and it's font.gif. Oh, looks like our width wasn't, uh, that's weird. That isn't correct. Oh, it's five by eight pixels. So we do need to make it a little bit longer. Uh, image, here, let me pull that back over. Image. Canvas size, I wasn't watching this. So what it did is it just made, I could leave it. Really, I could just leave it because it's, what it's doing is it's just adding some black pixels at the end, pretty sure. Um, let's take a look here. What did it say? 475 to 480. Let's just bump it over to 480 so I don't get that error message. So I don't have to worry about it. So 480, resize. And then layer layer to image size, shift B, and just fill that, export it again. There we go. And now, when I run this command, I need to add another flag for overwrite. It should just, loading file, done. Now if we list it, we have, uh, we should have a dot .map file for our, this is eight bits per pixel image, that's why it isn't a dot .rgb because um, it's just a map of those pix pixels of the it's like a paint by colors thing it just has numbers for each pixel and then it looks at a color lookup table for which color to use for which number so that's why it's dot map instead of dot rgb because it's not actually storing any color data it's just storing an id for a lookup table for the color um, and let's go ahead and uh, let's see seven seven let's let's pack this LZ77, there we go. Uh, I was just gonna see the size here. I, I like checking out the size. So so we went from uh, uh, 38K to 11K on that image. So, okay, let's pull that in. Uh, we're going to actually put it above this, and we're just going to call it font. Need that underscore for some reason. It has something to do with assembler macros. I'm not entirely sure why we need that, but something to do with syntax. All I know is it needs to be there. One day I'll read about it. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. One day I'll read about it. Okay, font. That's good. Um, I'm I'm thinking this font needs to be universal, and so we're going to come to our common assets header here, and we're going to bring it in there. Um, this is font, and it is extern uint eight underscore t called font, and we need a place to put the data once we unpacked it, so it's going to be called font data. We actually need to change this, uh, the name of this, because uh, the structure for how we handle the font in our text engine is called font as well. And so what I'm going to call, I'm just going to change the name of this to font map. I like that. Like that. Yeah, that should be fine. Sorry, I'm just thinking about our font engine and how that's how that works. I probably could just leave it font. I think it would work fine, but um, and this won't need a sprite because uh, the way our font engine works is uh, it's just a it's a data buffer that you don't see until you actually create a line of text. 
and that's separate from where we load the font map from. Okay, I, I'm just going to run a quick make command, or make clean, or uh, we need to backtrack a little bit. There we go. Make clean, make like that. Okay, we're good. So that should be loading just fine now. Um, I'm going to, I need to copy over our, where, am, where where's the most recent place I'm using that? I think, um, well, actually I can't say, I don't want to ruin that surprise. Um, I'm going to pull it from another program I'm working on that has the most updated version of the font, uh, components, text engine. Yep. And copy that over. Uh, yeah. Over to here. I'm just going to put it, I'm just going to put it right there. I'm going to copy it out. That's what I'm going to do out of that folder. Put it here. Delete that. And then we're going to just call this text engine. Text engine, like that, sure, clean that up, don't need that, yeah, let's see here, I think we're good, text engine, I gotta reload project, I need to have it not load all those assembler files. <laughs> That's okay. Collapse recursively. Okay, so now we have this new text engine, which I need to change the name here. Like that. And then this is uh, text engine. There we go. Okay, that should be fine there. Um, okay. What I need to check for is our widths because our widths are five pixels across. I'm not sure how the engine's handling. I think right now it's expecting an eight by eight per character. And I don't know how flexible we have things set up here. Oh yeah, look at that. We just we have an array that is the width of each character. So yeah, we designed this so you can do a non. Uh, so you can use a font map that doesn't have the same width for each character. In this case, we are. So it makes this array easy to set up. Um, but our offsets and the offsets are going to be easy to set up as well because it's just going to be every five pixels. Um, so yeah, that's fine. Uh, so we'll set those up. Those will be easy to set up. Uh, the width of the graphic, which is what was it, 480 pixels, and then yeah. So this is this is pretty easy. You know, some of this could probably be rewritten because um, this was done with a far more limited understanding of C. Uh, my brother, uh, who helped me first build this engine, he he designed this, but he was fairly new to C as well when he did this and so there's probably a better way to do this we're going to just keep it the way it is for now i don't want to spend too much time on that what time is it um, i'm i'm actually going to cut the stream off here in about 20 minutes but let's see if we can get at least something up on screen here um so uh let's do this it was what was it 475 before so uh, 475 divided by 5. We have 95 characters, so we know the size of our array. It's 95. Uh, so we're going to do this, this just over in our common assets. We're going to build these um, arrays. Uh, so the first one is going to be just integer arrays, font, map, map, widths, and uh, what was it? I already forget. 475 divided by 5 is uh, 95. And there's 95. So 95 characters that we're dealing with. 
um, and then we're doing another array for our offsets like that and we can actually fill those out here equals I'm gonna do them in sets of five so our widths each character is five pixels wide I'm pretty sure let me double check that okay our that is a five pixels wide eight pixels tall yep that is correct okay uh, and so these are all just going to be five 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 two three four five and actually we're going to do these in rows of 10 just to make this a little bit quicker so 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 and then one two three four oh did i screw that up already one two three four five one two three four five okay so we're good there so one two that should be 95 values uh it will spit out an error if it isn't um and then our offsets this is a little bit different um this one we're just gonna have to manually type out it's gonna be a bit of a pain but um But we can do it. This is going to take a little more time. I guess I could populate this. I could procedurally populate this, but I'm not going to just in case we do need to do a custom font in the future. Sure, that's my excuse. We'll, we'll, we'll use that as my excuse. <laughs> but this is just 0, 5, 10, 15. Oh, do I really want to type this out? I really don't want to type this out. <laughs> 20. Um, You know what? We're going to leave this alone. <laughs> we are going to procedurally generate this because I don't want to type that all out. <laughs> um, we can actually do it right. No, 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 no. Uh, here, let's procedurally generate both of these <laughs> because it it is just simple. Uh, what we can do is when we load our program, we can just fill out those arrays really quick with a couple for loops um, so let's just we're gonna be knitting our font like up here somewhere knit font um, generate arrays so for run some for loops i equals zero uh, zero and as long as i doesn't equal 95 I plus plus, and we can fill out both of those right here. Um, so font map uh, widths uh, I equals five. They all equal five, right, on that one. And then font uh, map offsets I equals um, I times five yep. and that's it that's a lot less work than manually typing that all out that should work let's make sure that works um, let's do make uh, clear make clean and make let's see what errors we get if any looks like we're fine so those should be initialized and they're permanently initialized. They'll just always be there. That doesn't take up too much memory, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, we do need to bring in our text engine. Just got to decide what header to do that in. Let's just do it in our main header for now. Hmm. Maybe we'll do it in our common assets. Yeah, let's just do it there. So include in our root directory text engine.h. There we go. 
now. I always have to relearn how to use this text engine. Um, we just create a font, looks like. We can do that. Let's do that really quick of type font. Um, so of type font, we can create our font like that. Um, and we'll init that in main.h. In fact, that's all we need to do here. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's all we need to do here. Oh, yeah. And then, so I'm just going to copy this. That way I don't have to type it out. Uh, init font. So right here, we can initialize the font. Uh, our width is 480. And we just swap these out for this here. What's this 12? I forgot what that is. Font is our height. So our height is 8 pixels. Like that. Um, and then this is font map data. And we still need to ex actually extract that data. Uh, so our font map, and this is not an ampersand. Uh, where did I do that? I think I did that in main, and we need to move that. Oh, no, no, I did it. I did it here. Phrase, yeah. So this is, this is all set up. So we just need to unpack it to font map. We need to allocate font map data and then allocate or unzip the data to that or unpack the data to that, not unzip. We're not using zip. Um, so font map data equals malloc uh, size of, and you technically don't need to type this out, but I'm going to anyways. Um, and then just the width, which is 480. It's times, times by, uh, I'm just going to get rid of the spaces, times by 480 times by five, uh, 8 for the height. So width times height on that. And we're not doing a times 2 because this is an 8 bits per pixel, not a 16 because 8 is half of 16 bits, so it's times 1 technically. In fact, we could do that just so we have a formula. If it turns into a 16-bit image, we just change this to 2. If it's a 32-bit, we change it to 4. So, um, so we'll just leave that at 1, even though it's functionally not doing anything. Um, and then we unpack it. And I'm going to type this out because this is something I want to memorize for the future. So font map, that's the source. And the destination is our, um, we have to cast it as a, a unsigned 8-bit integer pointer um, is font map data. OK. Uh, let's see if that crashes. Let's see if we get any errors. It looks like we are getting some errors, or some warnings at least. Too few arguments to font. What are we missing? Looks like my little tutorial thing is wrong. Array size. So we need that needs to be 95. So this is 95. Z77, seven, seven. oh, unpack, there's that, and new font, why isn't it finding that font, oh, uh, because, no, no, we got that right, uh, this should be, this should actually just be that, Uh, incompatible types when assigning font. Uh, that isn't true. That's right. Oh, there we go. That needs to be a pointer to that structure type. But it doesn't know what new font is. Am I spelling that right? Capitalization's correct. 
it is not seeing these functions for some reason. Oh, I need to add here. We need to add our text engine. Text engine dot c. So it's actually uh, compiling that source file. Um, we aren't going to need this, but I need it in this current version of the text engine. Excuse me. Oh, it is early where I'm at. <laughs> I'm still waking up. Um, so let me show you where that is. So I have an option in here for a container box. Um, I built into this engine. I'm just wondering if I can get rid of that. Um, update container and text position. So we'd have to get rid of that. That's fine. The count line breaks. Good. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So I think if I just wipe this out, I'm going to have to change the structure, I believe. Yeah, there's a container box structure but that's not a part of the text box structure. So yeah, I can just wipe the container box stuff out. We don't need it. Yeah, I think we just got rid of it there. I just need to get rid of it here, container. It's all the tutorial stuff, I'm not too worried about that. Rid of that. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Yeah, we we won't need that container box for where we're going. So that should build just fine now. Implicit declaration of vsync, really? Where is it using that? Vsync. Oh, that's fine. We don't need to fix that right now. Okay. Okay, we should be good to go to write some text on the screen. Now, what I don't know is if the ASCII conversion is going to be correct because of the caret symbol. Um, it may just not draw it. Let's, let's test it out. So, let's go look at our tutorial on the text engine. I did a write-up for this, so I wouldn't have to go and uh, dig through other source files and other programs anymore. So we just need to create a text box. So this, I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier in the stream. What, what I'm thinking about doing, instead of recreating those text box for each menu, what I do is create, I pre-make, I template a bunch of text boxes that have a set size um, to begin with. And then kind of like what I was doing with the console before, I can just use those, I can clear them and use them wherever I want. Um, so I'm not having to type out unique names for everything. Uh, the disadvantage is, is that I don't have unique, unique names for everything, which can be a problem. But um, for now, what we'll do uh, is just in common assets, we'll create, um, oh, how does he, text box. So we'll create a bunch of text boxes. Let's create like 40 text box. Um, uh, we, we need to give it a name here. I'm not sure what to call it. Um, uh, I usually, we, well, we can't use the same name, so um, let's do line text box like that. And let's do 40 of them. Or do we need that many? I don't think we need that many. Let's just do 30. We can, we can change this later. It's not a big deal. But now we have access to 30 of those that we can use 
wherever we want. We just got to make sure we don't use the same one in, at the same time, more the same one twice at the same time, um, just like we, what we were doing with the console stuff. Um, and so we can actually create, uh, so line text box, box equals, and jump back over to here, a new text box, and I'm going to have to reread, or I'm going to have to relearn all, in fact, let's do this. We'll go to text box, new text box, we'll just copy this over, and we'll go through it. So our character text, this is the actual string that we're going to write. So this is a test. And I recently updated this so things are a little bit, um, I'm just going to add some characters here, money sign, and I'm going to add a caret. Oh, those need escapes or something. Oh, that needs an escape there. Um, carrots. Uh, ampersand parentheses because we're probably going to use those. Okay, um, so we got that. The box width, I'm just going to make it. Uh, uh, th let's see here. Is there. Let me open up source removers library. There's specific, there's only specific values you can use for a screen buffer. Um, and I just want to make sure I have those. Uh, correct. That isn't right. Let's screen header. Seems like it's up here. Yeah, right here. So, uh, 320. So I'm going from 256 to 320. So maybe we'll do a 320. I kind of want to do a 256 to tell you the truth. Um, Because that covers almost the whole width. Yeah, in fact, that's all we're going to need. Because um, the space, I'm going to measure the space inside of our background image really quick. It's probably only about 256. Yeah, it's 260. So yeah, so we can just do 256. Because everything is going to be fitting in that window anyways. Um, so... We'll just make these 256. So the box width is 256. Box height will make, um, let's make them, um, well, they need to be at least eight pixels, right? So let's make it eight pixels. And this is just gonna be a line. Um, yeah, we're just gonna do lines. We're gonna do it just like the console. I think that's gonna be the easiest way. And this way I can just pick the line that I want. Um, the font is just font. Um, padding, there's zero padding, the display is settings, display the exposition of the sprite, let's just put it at, uh, uh, in fact, I can look at the graphic here too, let's put it at 30, let's do 40, 60, or 38, 60. 38 pixels, 60 pixels, and the display layer, we will make one like that. Um, and then there is a function to actually draw this uh, because it's just setting up all of our buffers for that and then we need to actually uh, draw it. Um, Oh, I'm not doing something right. Init text box. Oh no no, I think I think I'm doing I'm doing it right here. Let's let's see here. New font, new text box. That init text box. Where is that? Am I even using that? I don't even think I'm using that. I don't think we need that. That must have been something I was working on at some point. I need to do some cleanup, I guess. Um, just wanted to see what it does. It doesn't look like it does anything for a sprite. Oh, how am I doing the sprite? 
there's a sprite here. It must just be knitting it all. Let's go take a look. I got it. Yeah, so it is. Um, so if display isn't null, then it actually attaches, it generates. Okay, so it's doing that all for us, which is nice. Cool. Uh, that's really nice. I, I, that's the recent change, too. I think before I had to create a separate sprite and attach the text to it. Like, it was a lot of work, but I have that all automated now. Um, in fact, this should just show up at this point. Um, so let's find right there. Didn't type something in right. Thirty-six. Oh, whoops. Uh, yeah, we just had to give it a specific one there. Oh, it still doesn't like it. Uh, incompatible types when assigning to type text box from. Did I not put a? Not yet. A pointer. It's a pointer to a struct. I don't know why I'm forgetting that. I'm usually pretty good with that. Well, I didn't type anything. Um, something we do need to check is uh, our... Oh, no, 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 that's right. We just need to make sure that the in our lookup table... Oh yeah, I probably need to do that. Let's uh, let's do that up here. Tom reg. So we need to tell the lookup table to actually have a color because it may not have one right now. So zero is always black. That's the transparency um, color in the lookup table. But the next one is typically white, and so we can just set that to white. Um, that's probably why it isn't showing up. Huh. Uh, line text box zero SPR trans uh, equals uh, zero. Let's make it not transparent for a second. Make sure it's actually adding the sprite. Yeah, it's not adding the sprite. Why isn't it adding the sprite? Vsync. Okay, that's not a problem. Huh. Why isn't that showing up? Here, let's do this. Uh, text box. Temp te uh, box. Like that. Hmm. Well, maybe we didn't unpack our uh, font data correctly. So let's attach it to the screen really quick. So let's create a sprite, font sprite equals new sprite. Uh, it's 480 by 8. We're just going to put it at 0, comma 0. The depth is an 8-bit and it's font map data and we need to attach that sprite font sprite to the display at layer one Let's see what that looks like there it is so it's up there at the top as you can see so we are unpacking it correctly that's a good sign um, it's just our text box isn't working. New text box. There must be something I'm missing. Let's go scan my little tutorial here. Um, so our font, we make our new font. That should be correct. I'm going to do this by initializing. There's no need. Text box. Oh, we didn't draw it. We need to draw our text box. I forgot. About that. So we can, uh, this engine allows us to type text. We have a little function that will type text, and then we have a function that will draw it just all at once, just as quickly as it possibly can. 
So um, yeah, that's what I forgot. So let's actually control Z back to this. Um, we can get rid of this line and I can draw text box. So line, line, text box, zero. This should give us our text. There it is. It's all jumbled for some reason. <laughs> I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um, my guess is it's still hard coded for a uh, is it hard coded? It's hard coded for uh, a specific width. No, it shouldn't be because we designed it to to do variable width and height for the text. Draw character, VD, 2D, copy straight. Yeah. And it does that according to character offsets. What is this for again? I always forget what this is for, this minus 32. Oh, that's just the ASCII offset. That's fine. Um, hmm. This is all fine. Pretty sure we're good on all that. We know we're pulling in the map correctly. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely pulling the map in correctly. I'm just wondering if it's having a hard time with the five pixel width. Here, let's do let's let's try something. Let's make our widths eight pixels instead. Uh, that doesn't seem like it helped out a whole lot, to tell you the truth. Um, and let's make this just this really quick. So our widths are five. Um, and our map offsets are, that's correct, right? Times five. Ooh. Yeah, that's correct. Pretty sure. Well, actually, is that correct? 95 times five. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we're, we're definitely good on that. Hmm. Font minimize uh, the offsets. Let's go double check those. Make sure I'm not mixing those up. We it's the widths and then the offsets. So yeah, that's fine. And then the graphic width, which is 480. Yes, that's correct. Height. Let me go check that really quick. Go to our knit font. So our height says simple screen. Yeah, that's the height of the map, which is five pixel or eight pixels. That's correct. And our width is 480. So yeah, that's correct. We're good there. Yeah, that should all be fine. Should all be fine. Um, let's take another look at this. I don't really see a pattern. Huh. Oh, yeah, there is a pattern right there. So it's definitely 
Here, let's um, just do uh, exclamation marks because that's our second um, character in the font map. So yeah, that's working. It's it is picking from the same place. It just doesn't like something about the map. So it's eight tall, four eighty wide. Oh, this is our problem. We can't do a four eighty wide screen. We have to do uh, a five twelve. So. We're gonna come back here to our font map. I think I got I, I think I got this figured out. And we have to make this 512. Because what it's doing is it's creating a screen buffer that's copying this data into. That's what it's doing. Um, and that has to be set to one of those uh, sizes that's in that he header file. And so I gotta make sure <laughs> that we do that. And so in this case, it's 512. Uh, resize, uh, layer, layer to image size, fill that in. Why can't I fill that in? There we go. Export. There we go. And then we have to re-export that. So let's um, go back over to our code. Um, Let's see if I can just quickly navigate it to it from here, right there. And then we go back to this to reconvert it. And then we go back here and we got to change some values to make sure we're unpacking it correctly because it's not 480 anymore, it's 512. What I should do, I should make it so it fails if it's not a valid width on that. Um, that way I don't run into this in, in the future. But if everything is okay, oh, whoops. Whoops, CD, driver stuff on the, there we go. Should, oh, no, not quite. Still not there. That is unusual. This should be working now. 512, 512. I, I cleaned, we did a make clean. That's something we have to make sure we do. Yeah, that should be working now. Did change for sure. Um, Just trying to see if there's a pattern that I can recognize here. It's almost like it's not. Um, picking the right. Yeah, it's definitely not going to work. Um, let's see if there's any any errors. No errors. Huh. Maybe that I didn't think maybe it isn't as malleable as I thought it would be. Um the only other thing I can think of off the top of my head is that these aren't actually global. Um well, we can cut these out. Technically, they don't have to be global now that I think about it. Um, just do this. See if this... No, that isn't the source of the problem either. Hmm. Well, I was hoping to get some text up here, but I need to get off stream here really soon. 512 times 8, it is 8 pixels high, right? I'm going to double check that. We are, yep, 512 by 8, definitely 8 pixels high. 
Um, our offsets. Let's make sure that offset one is five, because that should be our exclamation mark, right? Um, and yeah, it should be five. Yes, it's five pixels. So, yeah, because I can actually change this, this will change the pattern to something else if I offset that. Should it is not. Now that is strange. That is really strange. So this has got me dumbfounded now because that should be changing. Let's see here. Where's my example? Code, text box, joypad. No, 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 no. Do I need? No, we're not changing those, so I don't need an ampersand there. Um, hmm. Let's change all of them. That is bizarre. I don't know what's going on here. This is really weird. The reason why it's weird is, well, we can we can test this out really quick. I wonder, no? Let's open up our debug console here really quick. I'm just going to have it do a for loop i equals zero and like i, as long as i doesn't equal, let's just do the first 10 values, i plus plus. We're going to print out these arrays and just make sure that they're initializing correctly. So um, f print f cons, uh, debug console. We're going to have it print uh, percentage D of font map. Let's do offsets first. So it should be like 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. It should just be every five pixels. Um, yeah, should just be that. that. Ah. So it isn't initializing those correctly. Do I need to, I may need to, uh, do I really need, I don't need those to be here. What we can do, pull these out, uh, get rid of these. And just stick them in here. Uh, may not see. Just right here. Okay. Let's see if that initializes correctly. No, it still doesn't initialize correctly. Why wouldn't that initialize correctly? There's 95 equals offset. Yeah, that should be fine. Um, let's pull this up. up here. Right here before, and let's print it before we drop it into fonts. Yeah, so this is our problem. <laughs> these, these arrays aren't being initialized correctly. I don't understand why, though. It's just... 95 integers and I'm setting each integer to five here and every five there like oh duh yeah 
I'm printing the address, not the, uh, there we go. It, I think it's working just fine. Okay, yeah, so that's working just fine. And then if we do widths, they should just be five. Yep, okay, so that's all fine. Those are working fine. Get rid of you. So the question is, when I change, um, oh, I'm not doing it before. No, I was doing it before because if I if I put it out here and let's change this should be the exclamation mark so instead of five it should just be five put it to ten it will be the next character in the array which should be some quotes or ellipses that's what it should be that's what I'm expecting anyways yeah there's something something not quite right here I don't know um, I don't think I'm, when I do an FB2D copy, I don't think I'm limited to, uh, eight pixels or, or something divisible by eight. I'm pretty sure that's not a, that's a non-issue. So right here, because we're taking the width and then the height. So this is going to be eight pixels and then this is going to be, um, uh, five pixels. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, so let's see, exposition. That's fine. The font graphic is the character offsets. It gets the offset there, which is just, in this case, it should be five. Yeah. This should be working. I don't know why it isn't. Let's go. Uh, I'm going to open up another project here really quick. Uh, let's open up Crescent Memories and see how it's doing that. I'm not doing it there. Probably doing it here. Oh, no, no, no. I am doing it on, on that page. So right here. Int offsets. Yeah. So there's nothing special going on here. It's just not wanting to work for whatever reason. Huh. Well, I guess we'll probably have to work on this a little bit more tomorrow. I just shouldn't be having this problem. 256, let's try 320. I don't think that's going to make a difference. But, yeah. It just makes it the the buffer that we can paint to is 320 pixels wide which is a valid number and 256 is a valid number too so that shouldn't be an issue um that shouldn't be a problem equals that's clearing it out so there shouldn't be any garbage yeah there is uh i wonder can i print can I print the, uh, let's go take a look at my font structure here. Uh, there is a sprite, oh no, no, not there. There's a screen here, so I can do a sprite of screen. Let's do that here really quick. I want to make sure that my font is being initialized correctly, because I may not be doing that right. So, um, sprite temp sprite equals uh, set simple screen where are you sprite of screen x y and then the screen sprite of screen um, so sprite of screen and it's uh, graphic that's what it's called in the structure so it's uh, line or no 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 font graphic and then we're just gonna put it at 10 10 like that and then we have to attach it so attach sprite to display layer 
So temp sprite to to settings display. Let's just put it up there. Let's just make sure that that's working correctly. Ah, so yeah, it's for whatever reason it's not allocating uh, in the font. It's not allocating that correctly. Not sure why. Let's go take a look at our knit font, see what's going on. So we allocate, we bring in the height, which is eight pixel and the width, which in, in this case is 512, kerning line spacing, we're not worried about. Then it sets a uh, the pointer to our widths and offsets. That's not a big deal either. Depth eight, graphic width, height, the screen it looks for, and then graphic, what's this? The new screen, what the heck? Phrase, graphic, oh yeah, that's just uh, the data. And so and we set a simple screen there. That should be working. Because we're allocating it at the end, that's fine. Why in the world is that not working? We extended it out to 512, which we know is a valid width. I'm just wondering if it's not a, oh, we didn't pack it. Figured it out, give me just a second. We didn't actually update the graphic, so. What I need to do is figure out how to better automate this. Uh, give me just a second, I'm gonna update. So we, we updated the graphic, but we forgot to update the packed version of the graphic. So, um, I'm not gonna do it in the uh, console in my text editor. Font map, font LZ77. There we go. Okay. Now, hey, look at that. It's working. <laughs> I just forgot to update it. Okay, at least we got it working. So we don't need any of this anymore. Uh oh, what happened to my. Uh, that's weird. Why would it do that? Um. I don't know why that disappeared. Sorry about that. I don't know how long it was that way. Um, anyways, there's that. So that's working. Um, this, why is it doing that? There we go. There we go. This is a test period. And let's do all of these characters up at the top. Um, sure. What? Passing argument. Why is it having a problem with this all of a sudden? I did delete something, didn't I, that I shouldn't have. Yeah, yeah. There we go. This is a test. Um, there we go. Let's see what it does with all that. Well, it worked pretty good. It didn't get my ellipses in there, but I don't know if we're even going to need that. Um, and it didn't get our carrot. <laughs> it just did the line break. Um, and it did another exclamation mark at the end. This. Oh, uh, wasn't I screwing? Yeah, I was screwing around with that. There we go. That should, this should get our spaces back. There, this, oh no, it's still not working. Yeah, so there's, 
there's just something weird with uh, because the fonts we were working with, we were taking certain characters out, and so there's a word offset I just have to fix in the engine. Um, like that's that's understandable. Um, what's weird about this is that first character should be a space, but for some reason it's not doing that. Am I changing my offsets in another place? Am I doing it twice somewhere? Um, not seeing anything. Yeah, that should be a space. For some reason, it's not a space. Don't know why. Um, Widths? Do I screw with the widths? No. Widths are fine. Offsets are fine. That should just be five pixels on that. I think it is doing a space, but for some reason it's still wanting to do an exclamation mark as well. Anyways, I, I just feel like I was dinking around with things here enough that there's something left over that I need to delete that's causing that problem, but I'm not seeing anything. Anyways, uh, we're going to stop there. Um, so expect more of this tomorrow. It, it won't be the most interesting thing, but what we're getting there, we'll be able to build a menu tomorrow. Um, and my guess is we'll, uh, if I can get this little problem figured out, I'm not sure why it's having a hard time. Um, it's just going to take another, yeah, it's just doing an exclamation mark. Uh, it's doing it for spaces and for uh after that ellipses and for the pound sign for some reason which is bizarre i don't know why it'd be doing that um the pound sign should be at offset zero one two three uh yeah just doesn't like that for some reason are there any more spaces? i don't see any more spaces yeah should just be working but there is this weird character I don't know what that is huh anyways um, yeah it seems like this should just be really obvious why this isn't why it's doing that but it's almost like it's drawing two characters but it's not drawing two characters sometimes where else is it doing it so it's doing it at the pound signs and spaces. It's just it's spaces for some reason, but not here. Mm. Let me force it. Offset zero equals zero. Still doing it. Yeah, that's bizarre. What if we make it negative one? No. Nope. What if we make it, or negative five, negative five. That's what it would be. Nope. What if we make it tw uh, 40? Why isn't that changing anything? <laughs> it's like it's ignoring the first one. Because if I, if I do, no, that didn't change anything either. What is going on? This is really weird. <laughs> our widths are five, our offsets. What is going on? I'm doing it before it applies it. equals 40 100 see that should be changing the exclamation mark here let's actually put a few exclamation marks at the beginning see what it does yeah this, sh this should be changing the character that shows up there but it's not hmm I don't know what's going on. This is really confusing. 
it's not working as expected. It's almost like it's ignoring the font offsets now. But it has to get them from somewhere, so there's no way that it's ignoring it either. So if we change this to 8, this should screw up how it looks. Yep, that's kind of what I was expecting there. This should be... Let's see what that does. Okay, that's messing things up appropriately. That's correct. Why can't I change it outside of that for loop? <laughs> Spelling it right, we're selecting an ID in that array, and we're setting a value to it. Why aren't you working? It's doing that minus 32 thing when it selects a character in the array. It does that because we're skipping 32 characters in ASCII, which are like break commands, just w weird keyboard commands. They aren't actually characters. Um, yeah, this should be, should be working. Uh, let's do, what was it, three, three or four is the pound sign which for some reason is an exclamation mark as well. I don't get that, but here, let's try, uh, let's try zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, the ampersand, so six. Let's just add ampersands in here. This should be whatever's at character 100, which is four. So that's working. So at some point before that, it's not wanting to work. <laughs> Don't get it. Uh, so what's the character? Let's uh, six uh, per percentage sign. Let's switch them out for percentages. So I'm gonna type in percentages and let's make it 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Let's make them ampersand, so 30. So this should make those all ampersands. Yep, that's working as expected. I'm just going to step down through this because this is a little ridiculous that this isn't working. I don't know what this character is. I wonder if that's throwing everything off. Uh, so I'm going to skip that one. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So character 3 is supposed to be the pound sign, but we're going to make them ampersands. Um, come on. What the so these should be ampersands. Yeah. There's something weird going on at character four, but I don't know what that character is. Um, I can, I think I can just do, uh, oh no, I can't. Uh, yes, I can actually. I can do OX, I can do four plus 32. It should. I uh, didn't like that. Um, can I give it a hex value? Oh, four. I don't think this is going to make a difference because it's looking for uh, um, uh, FF or F0. Let's do that. It's 128. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't like that. Can't do that. Um, I don't know what that character is. I'm, I'm wondering if that's throwing it off. Um, so there's this one character. Let me show you before we call it quits. I don't know what this is. This character right here. Don't recognize it. Um, let's look up a, an ASCII table. Let's pull it up here. So we're offset 32. We start at space. So it's supposed to be a money sign. So let's try doing that really quick. So if we type in money signs and we're changing them all to ampersands. Okay, that works. So something's happening with the pound sign. Let's go take, I just don't think there's anything in my text engine 
yeah, there's nothing in my text engine that has any special cases for the pound sign. It should just be working. And I'm pretty sure my other fonts and my other projects, um, let's see if I can find it really quick. They have pound signs, and so they've worked before. Um, on it, we'll be watching graphics font. Open it up. Yep, pound sign zero. Oh, wait a second. Why? Oh, no, 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 that's fine. It just has a short zero, one, two, three. Yeah, so it's just pound sign, money sign. Yeah, it's set up exactly the same. I do not understand why it's having a hard time with this. Mm -hmm. Weird. <sighs> Very weird. Why is it skipping? Let's try doing parentheses. So if we do parentheses like that, we have to do escape characters for all those because you can't have parentheses in parentheses. Um, Let's just disable that for now. Huh, makes those all exclamation marks as well. Why would it do that? It's always going back to that character. Why? It's going back for the first zero, one, two, three. So the first four characters, it's going, it's for some reason saying the offset is five every time. Why? I mean, we, our array, we're populating it, so there's no way that those are set to five in the offset. It has to be something with my text engine code. There's something... I don't know. If we exceed the max width of the word wrap, scan backwards to the previous space and add a line break to recalculate the width of the box padding. I'm just wondering if it's my auto wrap thing that might be screwing it up, but I don't even think that's coming into effect here because it's not actually hitting the edge of the box. Yeah. I don't know. Don't know. Wonder. No, it should be able to handle escape characters without a problem. Space should just be working. Um. Minus one. Is greater than minus one and process it. That's fine. Let's see here. Space is 32, which would make it zero, which is correct. That's correct. It should just be looking that up. Yeah, space has never had a problem like this before in my text engine. why would it have a problem with those first four characters? So if I do space, exclamation mark, money sign and pound, those should, for some reason, those all show up as exclamation marks. Oh, no, no, money sign is working now. Why wasn't it working before? Right? Oh, whoops, ellipses, not money sign, uh, parentheses. So, parentheses, there we go. The, this should all be, yeah, estimation marks for some reason. And then we can keep going. I think it was, what was it, money sign or ampersand uh, hyphen. So, uh, ampersand hyphen, everything after that should work just fine. Uh, hyphen, parentheses, star plus. So, let's do those parentheses. 
uh, star and plus. Those should all work just fine, which they do. Um, yeah, it's just the first uh, first four characters aren't showing up correctly. That is weird. There's definitely a bug in my text engine code somewhere. I, I just don't understand why it would be doing that now with this specific font map. Because our code's designed for variable width, our height is correct. It's 8 pixels tall. You know, something that was different was uh, other fonts, font maps I've used were 12 pixels tall, and so we had some pixels at the bottom, and I'm not sure why we were doing that. Maybe there is something where we have to um, keep that a certain height. I don't see why we need to do that, though. So this is how we select. We get our value for the ID we're looking at in our in our map. So for space, it's just going to be zero because we space is 32. We minus it by 32, which gives us zero. And so we're looking at the offset zero. Um, text box draw equals. This is just where we're drawing inside the the text box. I'm not worried about that. Where do we get? That's where we get our width. That's where we set our X. Yeah, this should just be working. Because <laughs> like if I hard code this to zero, everything will just go blank because it'll just be um, spaces. Yeah. If I hard code it to five, they'll all be exclamation marks. So I don't know what's going on here. Um, let's try this. Uh, can I... Let's give it a try. F print F debug console percentage D. I want it to print IDX. And this should just be a sequence of numbers because we're drawing those characters in order. Um, I don't know if I can do this in the source code directly like this. I, I need to um, add something to the header file before I can do that. Let's give it a try though, see what it does. Yeah, it didn't, didn't like that. didn't like that there was no reference to debug console. So what we can do is just... Uh, Copy this over to this. Oh, look at that. We already had a console built in. That's okay. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. It's working. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. This is really weird. Why would it be an exclamation mark? Why would it be five every time? This is allocating correctly, so I don't think there's going to be any garbage memory. Like if I hard code it, Gosh, it seems like it should be just simple, but it's not.
I know it's painting the right values or it's supposed to be painting the right values. It's just not. Like what I was expecting to see in that sequence of numbers was it was supposed to be uh, ID 1 several times for those exclamation marks. But it wasn't doing that. It was doing what it should be doing, but for some reason it's painting something different. Let's try this. Do this instead. Nope, no difference. Yeah, I'm pretty sure memory is being allocated correctly. That's the only other thing I can think of that could be causing that problem. But. Uh, I could have this print out uh, the character ID for each one of these, um, or the uh, where where is that? Um, this right here. I have to print this out every time, and it like when it's working, it should just be zero five ten fifteen. But the way it's painting things on there, what I'm expecting is 555 five, five, and then the other characters. 5555 five, 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 four times and then all the other characters. But uh, I thought I saved. Oh. Get rid of this. We don't need this. Oh, look at that. It is 5555. Five, five, five. So. I'm confused. At what point is that changing? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Uh, font. At what point is that changing? So, for some reason, I can't access those first four values. It's not letting me do it. Um, something in memory is not being allocated correctly. I just don't know. Let's pull this over. Over to main. Make sure I pull that. I did. So that's fine. <sighs> yeah. What? This is bizarre. There's something in memory that's throwing things off. That's all I can figure. Because I can't set these values. It's not letting me set them. Hmm. What happens if we do this? Just set uh, uh, widths. We have to, here, let's do this. Let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Let's manually do this. I shouldn't have to do this. Thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, one hundred, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's that. Is there ninety five values equals paste that in. So we're just gonna do the first zero, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty, thirty five. 40, 45, okay. 
Honestly, we'll just leave all the rest five because we're not worried about those values. We're not typing any of those. Um, well, I guess we are doing some of them, but 45. Yeah, I just can't set those values. <laughs> Here's something. Why can't I set those four, first four values? That is bizarre. It's really weird. Am I going over? No. These are two different places in memory. Like... Oh, look at that. They are overlapping. If I put random values that we're not expecting to see there. Look at that, they're overlapping. Why are they overlapping? Font map widths, font map offsets. Why would they be overlapping? Do I have too many? I may have too many going on. But if I do, I should be getting an error that says you're not initializing, the array isn't the right size, basically. But I'm pretty sure it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 5. So 95, that's correct. For some reason, the last five or four values in this array is overwriting the first four in this array. Why? <laughs> that makes no sense. It's just an integer array. Just, is there another place? They're all being initialized right here. So this isn't a problem. There's The only thing I can figure is I'm not allocating memory correctly somewhere. So for example, in fact, we can test this out. If we pull this up and do it like before we do anything else like that and run it. No, it's still overlapping. Why? This has to be a bug. In the removers library, right? I just I don't understand unless I'm not allocating something correctly here, which is very possible. Yeah, I just don't understand. Hmm. I mean, I can really come at this uh, from a different. There's another way to allocate arrays. It's a manual way of doing it. Uh, let's do that, I suppose. Um, equals malloc size of int times 95. Let me do the same thing for up here. Like that. And then we reinitialize these. Let's see, why didn't that work? Valid initializer, 30 and 31. Oh. Do this, and we make them pointers, like that. Okay. And this should be the same thing, and they're still overlapping, so I, I don't know what's going on. This is essentially the same thing as how I was doing it before, but it just doesn't make sense that it would have problems like this. wonder this is okay yeah I just don't understand 95 um, am I allocating my arrays see they're just pointers Oh, constant integers. That's that may be a problem. 
Here, let's get rid of those. Let's get rid of those constant ints. We don't need that. Technically never changing, so you can do that, but and what it does is it leaves it. Okay, that's our problem. Because when you use const, it puts in cartridge uh, ROM space, I'm pretty sure. That could be part of our problem here. Nope. Still having an issue. Vsync, let me comment that out in case that's causing a bug. Vsync. Vsync, there we go. No, that's not causing any problems. Yeah, there's just no other warnings or anything to point me in any direction here. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I've never ran into this before with with the font engine. Um, I just don't know what it could be. Why, why in the world would it be overlapping? Um, I'm just going to comment out a bunch of stuff here. Reduce everything down to bare minimum. Bare minimum. Read you guys. Okay, that's good. Where am I? Where was I printing that? Oh, I was doing it uh, over here in the text engine. Um, debug console. Get rid of this. And we're going to just print out in here. I like that. I like that. It'll just. Um, well, I don't want to, I just want to do like the first 10 in the debug console. There we go. Should work. Something's causing a problem. Let's uh, try this. Okay, that's fine. Bring this back in. What we do is we just slowly bring everything back in. There is some sort of allocation error going on here. I just don't know. Whoops. I just don't know what it is. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And, oh, look at that. Draw text box at once. When we run our draw command, that's when the problem happens. Because it's fine there, and then it removes the first four. So draw a text box. Uh, let's save this. One second, I forgot to save a source file. That's fine. Just need to check to make sure it has the same behavior. Oh, it doesn't. Interesting. Okay. Let's uh, put it after. Let's draw font. What 
is it? Font character offset. Oh, there's our problem right there. Found it. Um, this isn't variable. Our widths and that, that was our problem. 95, 95. I'll fix the issue. Hey, look at that. It's working. <laughs> we got it. Hmm. Well, aren't I bringing in... Oh, yeah. So what I can do, fix this, so we can make these pointers like that. Um, and then in our text engine C, when we allocate... Now this is good uh, that I found this. In the long run, it's good anyways. Uh, malloc size of font plus, and then we do uh, array size. Do uh, size of int times by array size times two, like that. We do that, and then, and this is a little tricky. Oh, no, no, no. We're, we're already doing it. That's fine. Um, yeah, we're good. We sh that should work, actually, and it doesn't. Um, hmm. uh, so font plus size of array. Here, let's do this. Let's leave this alone. And instead down here we do font character widths character widths equals malloc size of um, array uh, int times by array size like that. We do the same thing for offsets. Offsets. Like that. There we go. That's working. Okay, so now we can do a variable uh, font map. Good. That must have been because uh, when my brother wrote this, he wrote this was a part of it. And I've, I've modified this several times over time as I've learned things and so I was probably hard coding it because I didn't understand how to do this before. Um, another thing we need to check is there should be a free a function to free the font. Maybe. Hope I have it. No I don't. Um, and that's okay. Um, I can write that later. I'm not too worried about it. Let me just put a note here in for Want, uh, need a uh, free font function uh, that will unload that but anyways got it to work um, uh, I'm actually going to switch this back to normal arrays there are some disadvantages to doing the malloc because you have to unallocate that um, manually. Whereas if you do it like this, where you're just setting an array value, uh, it allows you to. Um, uh, it's only it's local to this. It's not a global thing. It isn't permanently allocating that memory. So if you leave this function, it's okay. It'll you can set new data on top of it if you want. Um, uh, what doesn't it like? Expected identifier before uh, 42. Uh, 50, 50. Oh, I just, yeah, we don't need this anymore. We can turn off our debug console. There we go. There's that. Bring the background back in. That took way too long to figure out. But there it is, we got the font working, so now we can type stuff on the screen. And that's good, we got that figured out, we can start building the menu tomorrow, and I know this went an hour longer, more than an hour longer than I expected. I just, it was, 
a dumb problem like I that that was happening so and it ended up being a problem with my engine I had this hard coded when it shouldn't have been hard coded now we're uh, manually allocating that at the end of that structure and that's fine that should that should work just fine we just have to remember when we unload the font if we ever need to do that we won't need to do that for this program but um, if we ever need to do that I'll need to write a function that does that or do it manually I can do it manually too we just have to uh, free the data of the screen here first and then uh, let's see here <laughs> yeah it's a bit of work it is a bit of work we free the data then we free the screen structure then we free the these 95 uh, integer long areas here and then we free the font so that's why you would write a function to do that so you didn't have to type that out each time um, Anyways, okay, we're really done this time. Thanks for watching. If anybody is still watching, uh, tomorrow should be a little bit more interesting. We're going to be laying things out. It'll be a lot more visual than just this code stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, again, I have that newsletter. The reason why I'm kind of pushing that is I actually, I had an old mailing list on there, but the laws have changed in certain places where you have to get consent that they actually want to be on that list. And so I sent an email out for that, uh, asking people to consent to the newsletter. I only got a few responses back. And so I cleared everybody else off the list because I don't want to deal with any legal stuff. Um, so if you were on my newsletter list and you think you never got in that email, just go sign up again and then you'll be on it. Um, but yeah, be, for, be sure to sign up for that. But uh, anyways, we, we will see you uh, tomorrow. Uh, have a good day if you're still there in the chat. And yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.